Yeah, good morning, Sarah. I'm at Middle Farm, which is on the uh, rather busy A27, just between Lewis and Alfriston. It is a fully working farm, but the key, as you say, it's an open farm. It's where people can come and get sort of up close and personal, if you like, as, with animals, farm animals, that maybe they don't normally come across in their suburban lives. Now, in a second, I'm going to be speaking to uh, Bonnie Hall. Uh, she's the open farm supervisor here. Uh, but before that, we've just had... A play something we've had a look round inside and this gives you an idea of what people can see here we'll come inside to a very large barn and there are a lot of birds here and one in particular who looks like he's the boss <laughs> who's this fella with uh, the fluffy feet bandit. he's a brahma cockerel right uh, he's actually bottom of the pecking order of all the chickens is he? in here there's a little small bantam cockerel wandering around somewhere johnny and he's yeah. he's the boss bandit's generally a little bit um last one to get the ladies oh right okay um so in here we've got a, a donkey over here as well um so what sort of animals do you have what what can people come and see here and why why, why is it important for them to see them um well we've got a variety of animals all what you'd expect to find on a farmyard we've got uh, obviously pipkin donkey sparky pony we've got another pony and a retired shire horse that came mm -hmm. to us once he couldn't be ridden anymore due to an old leg injury uh, sheep llamas goats pigs obviously chickens ducks turkeys uh, peacocks <laughs> rabbits guinea pigs uh, so quite a wide variety of animals um Nice red light over here, which we wander right. Tell, tell me why you got the red light, because there's lots of, uh, lots because, of animals yeah, underneath. These uh, chicks were hatched in an incubator rather yeah. than uh, under a mother hen. Um, and normally, if they hatched with a mother hen, she would keep them warm. Yeah. But because they've been hatched in an incubator, that light is a heat lamp, and that's, that's keeping them warm. Uh, as is in the corner, the plastic thing you can see, that's what's called an electric hen. There's a heating element under that, and they can sit under it. So it's quite a natural, like sitting under a mum. And when people come in here who probably haven't been this up close to a chicken unless it's in Tesco's before, <laughs> well, what's the reaction? Uh, well, much like you, the first thing that generally gets reaction is a really large cockroach <laughs> wandering around. <laughs> uh, some of the children are kind of at face level with them, uh, but all our birds are very friendly. They'll quite often join the members of the public for picnics and they've learnt that they're a good source of food, so they'll join them for uh, picnics. And we have a lot of birds that aren't out yet that'll be wandering around with the public during the day. And it's, yeah, like you say, people like like being able to get up close to them. That's the boss. <laughs> Uh, and, and that, Sarah, was Bandit being put in his place, actually, by the smaller cockerel. Uh, I'm with I was Bonnie thinking that now. was maybe Bandit encountering Simon Jenkins and being a bit alarmed, but obviously I'm wrong with my interpretation. No, 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 no. I kept right out the way, Sarah, right out the way. Uh, uh, Bonnie, why do you have the animals here? Why have you got it open to the public? Uh, well, we are obviously a working farm, so um, there is obviously an element of animals that some of our animals are reared for, as you'd expect, for meat and things like that. Obviously, the chickens lay egg and their legs, and there's a production in that. Um, but just think it's really important uh, particularly for children to get up close uh, to the animals some of the people that come to our farm have literally never seen a cow in real life they'll sort right. of stand and look at a cow and say oh is that a cow and they genuinely don't know we had a visitor recently that looked at the donkey and thought it was a llama so a lot of people oh. are encountering animals they just haven't seen uh, we offer guided tours for schools um, so that we can take the children around and really sort of work with them and get them to know a little bit more about each animal how it needs to be kept to be happy what if it's been a commercially kept animal what the end product is and a little bit about depending on the age of the children uh, how the sort of process of from farm to plate really does does work so education then running through that is what you're saying is that though to the detriment of, of the animals well-being no I think the animals we have here get as much entertainment from our visitors as our visitors get from them <laughs> we don't have any areas where our animals are forced to interact uh, with the visitors um, they're either in fields or in pens that are large enough that if they want to lay down and have a sleep I think the pony and donkey were asleep when we went in there as you saw they're quite relaxed and happy in their surroundings uh, but it's very nice I think to see that the animals do actually choose to go over and interact with the public we don't encourage feeding of the animals and I say the public aren't allowed in the actual enclosures and yet still the animals do come to the fences and want to interact with the public as much as the public want to interact with them. You, you would have seen uh, thousands of visitors over the six years you've been here. Um, what, what sort of reactions do, do you do they get, do you get to when they? I mean, when I walked in and noticed the cockerel straight away. I mean, what sort of reactions do you see time again? I think with the chickens, one of the biggest ones is uh, not just the size of the cockerels, but the fact that we have a lot of cockerels together because there's a con uh, sort of perception that if you have cockerels together that they do fight, and that isn't necessarily the case at all. We've got I don't know 60 or 70 cockerels that all interact very happily with each other. Um, one of the other things we've got several very very friendly sheep 
one who absolutely craves human attention. He's like a dog who comes to call, follows you around, and he comes out and about on a, on a halter to meet and greet the public, which is his favourite time of the day. When he gets to that time of day, he bleats and bleats. And uh, the, one of the biggest comments, people just never been that close to a sheep. They have a perception that sheep are in a field and are nervous creatures and that they're not intelligent, sociable creatures, which they really, really are. Sheep absolutely love to have interaction um, with, with you. But the key is it's on their terms? Absolutely on their terms, yeah. We don't have any animals uh, forced into doing it. And if we have an animal we feel doesn't enjoy the life, then we will move them onto a home that we, we think is more suitable for them. Uh, thank you very much, Bonnie. Well, that's the message then for Middle Farm, uh, Sarah. Uh, it's education is, is what they're trying to do, plus, um, you know, entertainment and attraction as well, uh, but on the animals' terms. Well, I love the sound of the attention-seeking sheep and uh, Simon Jenkins reporting there in his element.